Let's do this one. Kind of goes differently. All right, so if that's how it goes, to this is one where right hand position would be more like this. Again, I just like to avoid thumbs on black keys because it forces the hand inside the keys and it kind of gets stuck there and I can't pull it out. But um, I think something like that might work pretty nicely if we go one, uh, five, one, yeah, five, one, and then four, two, right? And that whole structure we just capture. Yeah, coming up, I don't know what to do. Probably keep one, reach with four. Yeah, uh, okay, let's finger. That's what I'm here to do. So four here, two there, and then one here, five here. Same there, but then four. Left hand. This video I'll try to avoid the YouTube algorithm sounds, see if that changes things. Big stretch generally in the left hand in this arrangement. One right there, and then first reaching with three, and then one right here. Probably just reaching with two or something. That that's my approach right now at least. Let's let's put it together. Yeah, but that's kind of slow, so I'm wondering if there's a better way to do it. That's better, but so what, what is required here? Stretching out the left hand like this, right hand is ready, uh, that's all good, but when this happens, this over the thumb position change needs to take place very quickly. So, so you're here and then you need to be here. You're here and then you need to be here. That squeeze of the thumb, that flick over of the long fingers needs some getting used to. If you're not used to it, you're going to feel, okay. You know, I get it, but it's, it's very rapid. It's easier to do it slowly, but the problem with this arrangement is that you don't have time to do it slowly, so... Now, with pedal means luckily I don't have to hold on to the D. Boom, I just reset right away. Right, as soon as I hit the D, my left hand is free to reset, so big stretch. In some way even bigger than the first measure, because here it's all white keys. Here I kind of have to aim the third to the G sharp, second to the B flat. But that same thing, flip, flick over. And then boom. Just one, two, three there on that three note chord. can even learn to play this way, you know, one on A, but four is already aiming towards F. F, E, D, that's it. Same thing though, we need to mark big moments of position change. I don't even know how to do it like that. Uh, da -da -da. 
position chain. No, maybe right there. And then big flick out of the thumb once we hit the F, like this. Yeah, I mean, it's a bit clunky, not, not the easiest introduction to master, but anyway, I, th I think those fingerings make sense. Now, let's get to the main, main theme. Same flick over in the left hand. So I think four, based on all, all the notes coming up. Four right here. Yeah, five. Trying to think what's most logical. So maybe kind of squeezing or at least uh, slides in a little bit inside the keys, uh, but the only finger that has to readjust its position is two. So here it's on F, here it's on F sharp. So yeah, I think that works. You know, big flick over right there. Now from that D, since I do have the pedal down, Probably we just put hmm. so tricky. There is that option, right? So the no. I just reset. That that could be nice because it doesn't require such a massive flick over. Is that like a technical term I'm inventing here? So uh, after the flick over, so you have this readjusting of the thumb. If you go with 3-2 that's nice because you don't have to move, but thumb and then 2-3-4-5. That's what makes me like this a solution because it avoids tricky tricky position motions, position jumps. If that's our preferred approach, this 2-1 instead of 3, then obviously I have to go back here Boom, delete, two, right here. All right, so that could be an interesting way. Two, three, four, five, jump. I would probably just paddle through this. Hard to say. Yeah, I guess I kind of want to clear this E, F resonance right here in this highlight because, you know, it sounds a little dirty. So my pedal will be doing all kinds of movements here, right? That means I have to delay the position shift to maybe right here, which means it has to be faster. Right? No, I'm doing wrong fingering, sorry. Right, that's the motion I want to practice. So I play F, change pedal, and then move. Yeah, that's uh, I'm gonna highlight it red because this is tricky. I mean, that's really what's going to happen here. You're, you're gonna play, it's okay, a little tricky, but then suddenly it's really tricky. But again, notice, whenever I identify the tricky spot, typically a big position jump, you have to stop. I'm not going on to play because if I don't stop, I'm not fixing it. Yeah, 
If I'm in this position, boom, finger five, all of this will fall into place. Let's go on and see the left hand situation. Hard to know. I like four just because of how it sets me up for that next measure. Let's put it right here. Here it is, still four, right? Then five, five. So yeah, that, that seems like something to practice. But that of course still means the left hand is doing these crazy flick overs. Right, so you have first this and then this. You can make it a little smoother, you can bend the thumb more. So the less you bend the thumb, the more you have to do this, which is kind of clunky. But the more you bend, the, the smoother the flick over happens. And then you flick it out. Flick over, flick out. Okay. But then after this, you're basically in position. There's hardly anything you have to do. Just one little, you know, thumb position adjustment right there. You know, pedal moving up and down as necessary. Let's see what's next. There it is. So now uh, melody in double notes. I like two there in the left hand because then it sets me up for the following measure. Stay anchor two on B flat, ex extend five, and there it is. Next measure all ready to go. it and now I've lost the pedal yeah that that feels good so pedal down otherwise you lose that nice harmony and then something like this all the way I'll figure it out later but for now yeah we have this two hold anchor it even though it's not written as, as a what do you call it a long note it's an eighth note but since you've got the pedal down it doesn't matter if you literally hold it down and then right, makes it much easier to negotiate all these twists and turns flick overs, flick unders, flick outs in the left hand. Now, right hand. Yeah, that's a classical moment where you have to play inside the keyboard so that the thumb hits the B flat when the time comes. But you start with two, right? And you have, you have five on the top note. Still five, but now the thumb. And then finally, thumb and four. So that's how you would do this right hand. Three, three, four. Now then we reset for the big moment. Uh, but yeah, be inside the keyboard. Flick over here is pretty important. No, wrong, wrong highlight, wrong symbol. All right. Flick over. In fact, I would make sure to move my five right away. So I'm not holding the B flat. I don't I don't need to. It's pedaled. So every time you see those squares, that's something to practice. It will not come naturally. Typically it doesn't. So you move the five right away. Let's highlight it red. And you flick over once, 
orange highlight and then yellow second time right oh so you didn't do the red if you're going forward you have to literally stop you don't continue you just stop and check stop check you did the first highlight second highlight and then third highlight and then I just stop but that doesn't teach you to play rhythmically it doesn't teach you to keep going in a flow that's why I do things backwards so for instance if I do this uh, one four there of course here I'm anchored I extend to my new position right there on let's say green highlight and then also green extends up here because I have to adjust the thumb okay so let's just say I am at green because if I continue I can play I should be all ready to go right I can do the entire end of measure one on this line second measure all of this is ready to go but with green I need to get to green so first I figure out what green is and green is this stretch B flat you know big big stretch in the left hand and then one and four ready to play B flat G right all of this is ready to um, re ready to to go it's just there waiting to be used but then before that happens I am right before green so those notes on B3 C and A, uh, B flat D, yeah, on holding this, second finger still anchored on B flat, and now I have to do this. Pedal this down, by the way. I'm making the move. Oh, and of course, B, C in the thumb, I'm inside the keys, I'm not playing here, I'm teaching myself to glide down this line, this black white border. Yeah, there it is. That's all I'm doing. So I'm stopping at green every time. Okay, so that seems like very basic, but start with basics. Make sure you've got the basics down. Then, right before that, we have same chord or same interval in the uh, right hand. And we have B flat in the left hand. So all I have to do now is start there and just get to that next chord. And then reset. So I'm holding that what's yellow highlighted and then play and reset. Pedal is down, that's not doing anything. I can hold that to, you know, left hand and then the interval above. Next, reset. So I'm always stopping the same place every single time. That, that's what builds those neural pathways. Then eventually I'm like, okay, fine, but I have to hold that G in the left hand, that orange highlight area, and already second finger is on B flat, right? Left hand, uh, right hand, forget about it. It's not having to do anything. Yeah, you could maybe press two down because, hey, you can. Nobody is stopping you. But more importantly, one and five is ready before its notes, C and A right so you're holding that G you've got this this uh, second finger pointing to B flat you're ready to strike B uh, the right hand notes and now you go that's tricky if you actually try it right now you'll find out how tricky it is right because every time I want to do just the right palm palm and I have to do this I have to do this I have to readjust on the green it's not straightforward, but that's ultimately, these are the kinds of spots that trip us up when we're trying to learn to play smoothly. It's like we're sailing just fine and all of a sudden, boom, 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 you know. So, just pointing those out. All right, then once you, you work through this little thing, like I showed, you go on. You know, wouldn't it be nice if that's where the music stopped? And by the way, yes, if you wanted to, you could slightly adjust. But then you see when you do the pedal adjustment, you lose the harmony. So I would let some of the dirt to linger. Right? It's just 
it's passing you by. Imagine you're in a big room, lots of resonance, lots of echoes. It, it works. But we need to know what's happening next because that forces us to uh, figure out our jumps. So what's happening next is this. That's what I'm leaning towards. Yeah, let's do this. So first chord, one, five, one, three. Kind of makes sense. Uh, let me put that in. All right, so you, you start here. Next, I'm suggesting Put two on A, put two on F, just like that. This allows us to instantly find the, the notes on B3, that big roll. There they are, three, two, one, one, two, three, five, already. Just by using a slightly unusual fingering pattern on that second beat chord. So let's try that out. Five here, but two right here. And then, kind of that magical harp-like roll. Make sure to practice this. So again, you can do it backwards. Top note is the last one, D. Before it is A. Before that is F. Right? Before that is D. That's four notes in the right hand. Then you add the left hand. C first, and then... Right? And then... Practice that to go to then A before that, and then finally F. Yeah, so three on F, and the whole thing. Yeah, so that's what I'm suggesting. Yes, and it forces your left hand pretty far inside the keys because the thumb goes on the G sharp. If you want, you can slide out. That's fine. But I really like how these fingers fit together in this passage. Okay, then you reset. Kind of noodling around with some possibilities in the left hand. Always like to start at the end because if I know how where I have to end up I can reverse engineer and figure out where I have to be before that. So I have to end up on D which is right here. Right, you see that D is going to be one, a five. And then there's the A next to it, it's two and so on three. Oh sorry not three, one. So that, that's the shape I want to end up with at the end of this current line which means th uh, fourth finger lies on E three on F, which means that probably two, uh, what am I saying, one goes on C. That seems to fit really nicely. Okay, so let's put those in. We can always change if we don't like it for some reason, but let's go with that. And then here it is. I'm ready for that final line on this page. So, D. like it works. So here, here's what I'm doing. I'll put 4 on D, 2 on F, 1 on A. And so that shapes this nice triadic shape. It's a D minor triad if you're keeping score, right? You can just then reset. You've got the pedal down. It's kind of binding all these harmony notes together, you know, all of these work well as a unit. So that's a triad shape and then you just move to one, three, four, finally five on the last line. 
which means that before that I would go with two and then three just like that <coughs> which means I have to reset right here okay now and um, looking forward also in the right hand I have to be all the way down here so I might as well show this in the same time I find it's always easier to just move both hands together when some position change needs to take place and then you're set ready to go okay so we got that um, reset both hands right and that takes us into the final line but before that we haven't marked any position changes so let's do that nothing to do between beats two and three perfect that's the only thing oh. that's the only thing we have to do I'll highlight purple right that that's a big moment and of course later I also have to change here and right here little moments okay, so purple is tricky but it's doable before that it's fine but then before that slide change three has to slide down to a so I'll show that right here yep and then you have to pick up five in the left hand slide it over to C and then aim two over G sharp right so there are a couple of things you're doing that are a bit weird and then once you extend that thumb right here you see that so I was actually kind of wrong you do have to do that thumb extension between beats two and three because you're playing but imagining you just played beat two you instantly flick out the thumb and then so after you play beat two then you're set but as you play beat two instantly flick out right you have to get that thumb on the C otherwise it's going to be a stutter so okay kind of tricky I apologize shall we rearrange this and not tell Philip Cavern will he get upset maybe all right so then we go to cyan Oof. of course a big jump right there let's make it green and then we'll have a yellow right here because of course we have to let's do it a little better there. so as soon as we're done with that uh, three note chord in that measure yellow right let's go to one five aim two towards a so it's a really strange position deep inside the keys finger five here finger two like that and then you just kind of get used to it and then in the green we do this okay fine but yeah another perfect candidate for backward work because it's too much it's just too much let's even not go to purple because I don't you don't see where your right hand has to go right it has to go right here to that chord on the on the next line but right before it you know to be able to play it you have to be right there at the indigo highlight and pedal is down just be here indigo fine then you play the actual chord uh, before that right you're doing that you're making sure that thumb is flicked out then you're holding that first beat chord right before the cyan highlight and now you're practicing this 
right? That's the tricky part. So cyan to indigo connection. I would really practice that. Gosh. So I'm really having to focus here, right? I'm holding this, I'm getting ready, and then boom. Takes a little bit of effort, but you get it. And if not today, then tomorrow it's easier. Then we have the green, which is this. We're right here, we're right here. Okay, well, if you're at green, that, that just means is you're ready, the pedal is down, all you're working on is hitting the first beat chord. Then changing the pedal, continuing, and then doing this. So there's always this idea of continuing to... Ooh, I actually rolled the chord. I, I wasn't supposed to, technically, for this practice segment right because I want to make sure I nail things just perfect before I continue with some other segment so this idea of always continue and continue means that you're also practicing the flow in addition to the right fingers at the right positions okay there it is and if you want you can slide back out we've got white keys coming up we don't have to be inside the keys Park your hands here at the indigo, and then, fine, once we figure out the fourth line, which we might as well uh, do it right now, you can practice into the purple highlight. So the last line, make it a little smaller like this, and reset the view, there it is. So I'm looking at all the chords that are on that line and I'm instantly thinking, okay, F, finger five, bottom F, finger one, that's an octave stretch. I'm working between those two limits. That kind of puts second finger on A and that's what I'm going to go with right now. Because all then I have to do is slight reset of finger five to from f to e again a small change but has to happen so make sure to do it right and then you're all set until you get to this part Here I would just do one, two, four, five, and just reset both the thumb and the fifth finger like this. So I'll show that right here and right here. Cool. That takes care of the right hand. I'm sure it has to jump at the very end of the line somewhere, but I'm just not going to worry about it at the moment. Left hand. something pretty irregular but hopefully it sets us up nicely for that position change 4 3 so that 3 is anchored and we have 5 3 1 2 1 usually people would do something like you know 2 1 and then you have to reset separately maybe you do 1 5 2 then a 1 and a 2 here lots of little resets I say make a tricky reset once, but then only do it once. And so here is my suggestion. Four, three, and then. By doing four here, we kind of automatically put five on the new D. And then as we play three, just make sure that you're also flicking the first finger over onto its note. And then a big reset as you hit here. Next measure is a little easier. Three and then a one. And we are anchored by uh, the B flat. Uh, 
as you notice if I highlight this and this same motif so same D C, D, C sharp D one two one but that's the tricky the beginning is pretty tricky I'll, I'll give you that if we if we go with my fingering and then right here so a couple of quick flick overs flick outs flick unders or whatever first flick second flick well actually if you make sure to do this correctly we only need two flicks I'll show you so we need to make sure this happens and this happens As I play for that instant double square moment uh, before three, as long as you do it right, that's that's all you have to do. Right, if you just kind of stop on, let's make it a red highlight, pink. That's it. So sometimes you do more work. To set yourself up better but then you you do less work as the result kind of topsy-turvy uh, all right so we have the whole thing first things first orange there let's make that a yellow I'm not doing anything all right, so let's do it forward first. I'll stop on every highlight. And right, I'm stopping checking that I moved finger five to orange. Then I'm going to do yellow and pink. I guess one other thing to check is as you're preparing that pink, maybe also prepare the stretched out. Mm, wrong. What? There. Uh, also prepare the stretched out five. Right. If you find your the size of your hand is just too small to do this crazy stretch, you can only worry about preparing five. So I'll put this top thumb position in parentheses, assuming you know not everybody has my hand size. Okay, so let's do that. If you cannot stretch this out comfortably, then just don't worry about the thumb, but make sure the five is stretching towards the D. Right, and now, then you can roll into the thumb as, as you get up to it. And a big jump coming up. So, that's where I would just practice backwards. I would say, I need to be on that a at pink five is on d okay my uh, right hand is ready pedal is down because of course we're going to do something like this oops and then change here and just continues continues uh, but you know if i'm like this at pink i'm good so now four like, I've just pressed 4, I'm basically at pink, but I'm also holding 4 down before pink. Okay, release 4, fine. I'm just making sure that all these little joints that I am, I've got to architecture into the building of this uh, performance are fastened correctly. That's all I'm doing. So 4 is down, pink position is down. Uh, or pink position is ready, uh, right hand position is ready, all of this is good. Now, we're going to back up to D and go into uh, yellow, right? So I've got D and now I'm flicking over my long fingers, I'm pointing towards that four, that's a big, big squeeze, right? And so I'm doing that and then... And I'm making sure to get into the pink. Holding four, holding four, getting ready, and then, and then I'm doing that. Right, and just 
see if you can reach the, the D with uh, the thumb or not. I'm just, there's a, I'm on D, I'm reaching over through yellow, boom, that's all I'm practicing. Cool. Then, of course, I'm on A, finger two, getting into D. Right, so all I'm playing physically are two notes. I'm anchored on D, I'm just getting ready, right, setting myself up to practice through this flow, through this uh, four note group, well, I guess five notes in total in the left hand. But I'm always, always stopping myself before I go on so that I'm checking these important adjustments. Okay, cool. And then finally, we get to the downbeat. We're holding this down, and now I'm gonna have to work in that right hand move. Tricky, this is getting really tricky. All right, so just, let, again, let's hold. This is, this is what I'm telling you. This is where probably once you've gone through this and your brain is about to explode, just reset, go back to the pink, right? Be, make sure you're, even before you play that A, you're right before A on the pink, you're in position in this weird stretched out position, both hands, cool. Now four, F, pedal is down by the way. Okay, release F, fine. That should not feel too difficult. Just pressing down and holding four. Well, it is difficult because four is, in the left hand is technically the weakest finger of a typical uh, piano 10 finger double hand, but um, you know, you'll get it. Okay. Then you get before yellow, right? D, squeeze in the thumb, four is aiming towards F and you're doing this. It should feel uncomfortable, and that's normal. Right now, A. One more time, A, just holding and thinking. D, F. All right now, it should feel a little easier. Finally, the downbeat. All right now, I've got three position changes right hand, left hand, and a big one in the left hand. And that's it. And if you still cannot do it, don't worry about it. Just come back to it the following day because these things need sleep time. They need to digest themselves, uh, re reestablish certain pathways, I guess. All right. And finally, last two measures of this line. You reset for measure three there. Let's highlight it. What? Green. Yeah, I think one, two, three, four, then reset. One, two, did I say three, four? I meant one, two, four, five. All right. This is stretched out. Big flick over. And flick out. Oh, and I forgot the, the right hand adjustment. of it plays itself all you have to think about it is slightly adjusting those long fingers to hit the C sharp because otherwise they want to play C natural but that's it that's it um, first page done I think yes I'll be seeing you and I'll be seeing you